So, you're a filmmaker, videographer, and you're looking for a new Apple laptop. You're looking online, watch 300 YouTube videos, and the only option for serious video editing is the MacBook Pro with the Pro chip, preferably even juiced up on RAM or SSD. Well, is it really? You see, I've been using a base M1 MacBook Pro from 2021 for the last two and a half years. And while it got me by, the last couple of months, it got significantly slower and my RAM was under a lot of pressure, even with light video editing. So it was time for an upgrade. Initially, a MacBook Air didn't even cross my mind as a possibility, but I remembered seeing some videos online a couple of months ago about a 15 inch MacBook Air model that came out recently. I checked it out, watched tons of videos, and while it maybe appeared to be a bit of a risk, I went with the 15 inch MacBook Air in midnight with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD. I just couldn't resist going for that sexy midnight color after previously owning that space gray 13 inch pro and before that one owning a 15 inch silver intel version for ram the jump from 8 gigs to 16 gigs is the most noticeable in the air lineup with the 24 model only having a slight advantage over the 16. for the ssd 512 appeared to be a lot faster than 256 which i didn't know previously with my previous MacBook using swap memory quite often, the SSD used for that swap is considerably slower on the 256 model than on the 512. So I checked both upgrades to my purchase. Lastly, the 15 inch screen is the perfect size for me. I like to edit in our living room downstairs to be close to my wife, my daughter, and my dog. So the 13 inch just felt cramped to be seriously editing. 15 inch gives me a serious setup downstairs so I don't always have to go up to do some real work. That along with a thin and portable design was just too appealing for me. In this configuration, I clocked out at 1,929 euros. This was around 350 euros cheaper than the 14 inch MacBook Pro. To me, that's still a big difference to pay for a smaller screen, a boring color, and for me, a slim boost in performance. I've seen video export times be a couple minutes faster on a 20 minute export. The screen is better and it has more ports. Because the MacBook Air doesn't have a fan, the Air's performance throttles under heavy workload for a sustained period of time. But this is only a performance drop of roughly 15% under really demanding circumstances. But the thing is, I rarely got my previous MacBook Pro to turn its fans on, but it told me it had too little memory rather often. Having fans is useful when you get your machine to need them. But if your computer has enough memory to handle what you throw at it, is it really that important? I've had this MacBook Air for the last three weeks and I've edited three YouTube videos on it. Sure, these are simple timelines, but compared to my previous M1 Pro, this blasted through it like I wasn't used to anymore. For these use cases, the difference between this Air and a 14 inch Pro will be almost unnoticeable. For more complex projects like wedding videography, this will maybe be more prominent. But those wedding films rarely exceed five minutes for me, which this Air will handle with ease. Playback and scrubbing timelines is smooth, even with heavy effects applied like an eight millimeter film power grade, which has various taxing elements of processing. In the heavy situations, sure, the Pro will be even faster and will remain that fast while this MacBook Air will slow down a bit. But the upgrade I've noticed compared to my 13 inch Pro is huge. So that extra cherry on top isn't really necessary for me at this point in my business. I would consider myself an intermediate slash advanced-ish videographer who does corporate work, weddings, etc., just like a lot of you will probably do too. I don't use crazy VFX, transitions, or tons of processing plugins. I think in that case, this MacBook Air will be more than enough if you bump it to the spec that I currently own. I've recently seen a video comparing this M2 MacBook Air with the last 2019 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro. Well, this MacBook Air smoked that laptop in almost any scenario. This shows you just how much of an evolution these laptops have undergone in the last years since the introduction of the Apple Silicon chip. I think professionals in 2019, which is a mere four years ago, were probably delighted working with that machine and they were able to do the most insane projects on it. While this MacBook Air right now in 2023 is actually more powerful. If that doesn't prove the point, I don't know what will. If your budget allows it and you need the absolute most power, of course go with the Pro. That's not what I'm saying. I just wanna give you a different perspective on these laptops. This laptop in Belgium is just shy of 2000 euros, which is a lot of money. Like anything, you can go as far as you want if budget isn't a thing. But I'd rather keep another 350 euros in my pocket 
in what is already a super expensive passion or job we have as videographers. I've seen so many people say, if you upgrade the MacBook Air, you might as well shell out the extra cash for the Pro because it doesn't make sense. Well, not everybody is capable of shelling out that extra 350 euros or dollars on top of already 2000 euros or dollars for a laptop. So specking out this Air to have the same memory as a 14 inch Pro and have very similar performance, at least in my use case, while also having a bigger screen, absolutely makes sense to me. Anyway, that was my rant towards people saying that you need the more expensive laptop to do serious work. I just don't think that's the case anymore. Maybe I will regret this decision in a few months when doing bigger projects, noticing a clear performance drop, which I highly doubt looking at the thermal throttle tests online. But as of right now, this thing is an absolute beast and I'm super glad I went with the 15 inch MacBook Air in that midnight color. That's it from you guys. See you in the next one. Bye.